Welcome to worship at the McPherson Church of the Brethren. We are an open and affirming congregation that strives to be hospitable and attentive to all of creation. We do not always meet that goal, and we have our share of ups and downs. But in the midst of it all, we continue to listen to God's call on our individual lives and the life of this congregation. We continue to seek to follow Jesus peacefully, simply, together. We are humbled you have chosen to worship with us. Welcome. Good morning. How are we this beautiful morning? Wonderful night of rain. It was refreshing, and for a moment we had a break into the uh, oppressive heat, and so God is good. Uh, welcome to this special Sunday worship, the day that we honor third graders. We have a commissioning service for a young adult heading into Brethren Volunteer Service. It's a day to honor new beginnings, new journeys, new adventures. Uh, so if you're joining us on Channel 13, welcome. If you're joining us online, welcome to you as well. What other announcements, invitations, guests, joys and concerns do we have to share? Kirk McGregor, Reasonable Faith, meets tomorrow night in Moeller 212 from 7 to 8 p.m. Our first topic of the year is what happens after we die. I look forward to seeing you there and to having a very interesting discussion. I'm, I'm a, I love our puns, and so is it to die for? Good morning, Becky Snell, um, talking for choir. Choir's gonna happen again, I'm so excited. Um, we're, we got together as music groups and we've made a schedule, so I have dates for rehearsals and when we're singing and you're gonna be so excited to have that. I'll be sending that out digitally, but also for those who've never sung before and maybe this is something you'd like to do, please come and join us. We generally rehearse Wednesday nights at seven o'clock in here. I will make more announcements but I'm getting ready. Music's being picked. So. That's exciting. Other announcements, joys, or concerns? Uh, I want to update uh, Kendra's dad. I know you got an email saying that he was being discharged and released from the hospital. That's what we thought as well. Uh, they went and did a final blood pressure check and it spiked again and so they're not sure what's going on and he's still in the hospital. Kendra's with him now. He's we just don't know what's going on. So continue to pray. We appreciate it. Thank you. I hadn't planned to make an announcement, but a couple of people have asked me why the sign-up genius for the tiny house hasn't been in the bulletin for the last two weeks. I don't know why, but I'll find out. I know for sure that not everything has been chosen. So there's still opportunities to, to help out with that. Thank you. Did everybody hear that okay? All right, because I'm not sure I could capture or paraphrase it as well as Shane put it. Any others? Then let us silence our hearts and our minds and draw deeper into worship.
And all of God's people said, Amen. Our opening scripture comes from Psalm 91, 9 through 16. You can follow along with me uh, in your bulletin. If you say God is my refuge and you make God your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For God will command angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift up They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because they love me, says God, I will rescue them. I will protect them, for they acknowledge my name. They will call on me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and honor them. With a long life, I will satisfy them and show them my love and grace. Please rise for the opening song. Please be seated. And in a moment, we have a wonderful message from Don for the children's story. So any children that want to come forward and enjoy the amazing technological advances we have so that Don can be with us, even when she's not able to be in the building. So children, come forward. I'll sit with you if you're okay with that.
Good morning, everyone. I'm really sad that I can't be with you in person this Sunday. It's one of my favorite days when the third graders get their Bibles. I remember when my children each got their Bible and it was such a special time. And I look forward to watching you on YouTube and seeing your bright shining faces up in front of the congregation as you receive your Bibles. So have a great time with that. I'm gonna start off the children's story by sharing a little book. It's called Jasper's Beanstalk and it's by Nick Butterworth and Mick Inkpen. On Monday, Jasper found a bean. On Tuesday, he planted it. On Wednesday, he watered it. On Thursday, he dug and raked and sprayed and hoed it. On Friday night, he picked up all the slugs and snails. Ugh. On Saturday, he even mowed it. On Sunday, Jasper waited and waited and waited. Wonder what he's waiting for. When Monday came around again, he dug it up. That bean will never make a beanstalk, said Jasper. But a long, long, long time later, it did. It was on a Thursday, I think. So I like that story about growing. I think sometimes we expect things to grow and change almost magically and quickly. And sometimes we're not as patient as we need to be with growing. But that reminds me of what's happening today because today is another step in the third graders faith journey. You guys probably don't remember this, but I'm betting that some of you were dedicated at church when you were just a baby. That's when your parents and the rest of your family come and stand up in front of the congregation. Then along with your church family, they all promise to do their best to help you learn about God's teachings. Whether it's at your home or at school or in your neighborhood or even here at church, whether it's uh, Bible school or Mac kids or during worship service, we hope that you are learning and growing in your faith. Sort of like Jasper's taking care of his bean, his bean seed, didn't really grow into a bean plant until he threw it away. He wasn't very patient, but you know what I can tell you? The people in this congregation were pretty patient, and we are excited to see how each of you grows and changes over the years. Eventually, we hope that you will choose to be baptized and continue to share God's love with the world, just like Caleb Samlin is choosing by joining BVS. Um, one of the scriptures today talks about Jeremiah, and this is when God called Jeremiah to be a prophet, and God wanted Jeremiah to go and share God's word with all the nations. Do you know what Jeremiah said? Jeremiah said, uh, no, I'm way too young to do that. And God said, yeah, I don't want to hear that. I will tell you what to say. I will put the words in your mouth and I will be with you. You do not need to be afraid. Mm. So it reminds me that I guess no matter what our age, we need to keep growing in our faith, keep learning. And you can especially do that now that you have your very own Bible third graders. And just remember that you are never too young to share God's word and good news with the world. So I hope you have a great week, everybody. See you later. I would like to share with you the words from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 8 that Dawn referred to. The word of God came to me, Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
Before you were born, I set you apart. I pointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But God said to me, do not say that. I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. So today is a special day. In response to hearing the call upon his being, Caleb Samuel said yes to joining Brother and Volunteer Service. And as he continues this mysterious path ahead, we will have a chance to commission and to bless him. Dear family, I charge us, I implore us to offer our blessing and our support and prayers to Caleb as he has a new and exciting chapter in his faith journey. Brothers and sisters, God's call comes to each of us in different ways. And when we said yes to following Jesus, we welcomed and invited the Holy Spirit to guide us, to direct us wherever the Spirit calls and whatever ministries God leads us to. Today, we begin our commission and blessing upon Caleb, who has said yes to a year of brother and volunteer service. Within our community, a community so rich in history of serving in brother and volunteer service, BVS, and supporting those who do so, it is fitting and right that we honor his call. Caleb, will you please come forward? And I'm gonna stand up here so everybody can see you with the cameras. Is that all right with you, if you join me up here? Ready? I know all of them ready anyway. This is Caleb Samlin. Everybody say hi to Caleb. Hi. He recently graduated from Mound Ridge High School, and this past June was baptized at Camp Colorado. He is the son of Jeremy and Angela Samlin, older brother to Layla, Great nephew to pastors Chris and Catherine. Grandson to Vicki and Bob Samlin. And I'm sorry, I don't know your mom's grandparents. Uh, and Amy and Brad Browning. Sorry to put him on the spot like that. Great grandson to Charles Whitaker. Caleb loves the mountains. He loves working with younger students. He's phenomenal at disc golf and amazing at ultimate frisbee. He loves nutrition and enjoys working out. He is an amazingly bright young adult, a beautiful young man who is ready to change the world. In the fall, he will be joining Brethren Volunteer Service as part of Unit 332, and his orientation is October 11th through the 19th in Rodney, Michigan. He, at this point, as far as we know, will be spending his year helping out in the general offices, working alongside McPherson College alum, Becky Olam Noggle, in the Youth and Young Adult Offices. Our prayer is that we will get to see you in April at Christian Citizenship Seminar. Caleb, God has called you and enabled you for the amazing year before you. You, to your credit, you wrestled with this call and you obediently said yes. It is a call that you have taken seriously. You've sought wisdom from others. You prayed about it and eventually you realized this was the path you were called upon. As you begin this new chapter, are you open to your community of faith blessing you? If so, say, I am. I am. Caleb, will you continue to honor your faith through remaining true to Jesus' call and his teachings? If so, say, I will. I will. Dear family, Caleb might soon be moving away geographically from our community of faith, and we will indeed miss him. Yet, this is a chance, an opportunity, a charge to all of us to hold Caleb in our thoughts and our prayers and to continue to support him. With that being our role now, will you all continue to support him in any way that he needs and as your heart feels led to do so? If so, say we will. Yeah. All right, Caleb, will you kneel? 
Jeremy, Angela, Layla, come on up. Typically, for a commissioning service, we would have the future volunteer kneel, and we would surround the person with the entire community of faith. But we are sensitive to COVID and the reality of COVID, and so immediate family at this point only. But if you want to join in this part of the service, we ask you to stand and extend your right hand towards us as we pray and we bless Caleb on this journey. So if you're willing to be a part of it, will you please stand and extend your right hand? Go ahead and put your hands up. Let us pray. Gracious God, Caleb has come here obedient to your call. He heard that voice whispering to him to go, and he is doing it. His courage, his faith has all already moved mountains, and I can feel his energy. I know his joy and expectation as he begins this new chapter in his faith journey. You've anointed him with such beautiful faith, such robust eyes to see the world and change the world, and you've given him an energy to never stop until it's done. So now we ask that you equip him, motivate him further, nourish his soul, protect him, and use him to make this world the place that you have called it to be and created us to help make it happen. Bless him for this journey. And we pray, oh God, that every person he meets, not only does he see your light in them, but that they see your light in him so that together we can make the world as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for your continued financial donations. You may give online at macob at macbrethren dot org. That's maccob at macbrethren dot org. If you are worshiping with us in person, you may place your gift in the offering box at the back of the sanctuary. Just slip it through the slot in the top of the box. Or you may mail your gift to the church office at 200 North Cary Street, McPherson, Kansas, 67460. Or hand deliver your check to the church office. Just push it through the mail slot at the Education Building. If you join our worship from afar... Please donate to local needs in your area. Thank you for sharing.
Matthew 18, verse 2 to 6. He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Anyone stay up here with me? All right, if I could ask the Faith Formation team to, to join me up here. This is indeed one of the highlights of our calendar year when we get to hand out the third grade Bibles to students that are moving on into third grade. Uh, we have six students this year that are receiving their Bibles. Uh, Briston Hancock won't be able to make it. They had uh, an incredible opportunity. Mandy messaged me yesterday. Her nephew, who's been serving overseas, is home, and they have a few days to spend time with him before he gets shipped off somewhere else, and she apologized, but she felt that took primary, and I did not argue with her. Carson Lawling, uh, Craig messaged me this morning, and he apologized, but they're not able to make it. Isla Pollard, her mom is preparing for surgery, and she wants to make sure she's going to have that surgery, so she's doing their best to remain sort of secluded and, and away from crowds. And Julie Ryerson, uh, Abby, and Cody are doing other things, as many are on Sundays now, but uh, they're all appreciative to receiving their Bibles. And Avic Miller will be represented by Linda, uh, and Avic just isn't able to be with us. I, I, so. But we have Zora with us. And so, Zora, will you come forward? And we're going to start with Zora. So, whoever has Scott. Zora's. Scott. Zora, Charlotte. Griffith, come on up, uh, lives in her mom's house with EJ and herself and her mom, Jessica. At her dad's house, she lives with Adam, her dad, and Zora, herself, and a beautiful, vibrant dachshund named Ernie. Uh, she loves riding her scooter and her bike. Uh, she loves playing Minecraft, playing with fidgets. I'm going to have to refer to some of my grandkids for what that means, and reading graphic novels. She will be going to Lincoln Elementary, and her favorite subject is math. Uh, her mom tells a couple great stories about her. Uh, she leaves notes around the house for her mom saying things like, Mom, I love you. Um, and her mom says she's very proud of Zora for trying out a new hairstyle. So tell who you're doing. Carson. Uh, Carson, Lee, Loling, Lolling. I apologize, uh, lives with his mom and dad, Craig and Megan. Uh, he's got a brother named Lane. His grandparents are Steve and Sandra. Uh, his Aunt Jenny and Uncle Chris Schroeder uh, and cousins Bryson and Ashlyn. I'm not sure all those people live together, but that's his family and his uncle, Tim. Uh, he loves to play baseball and video games. He attends, I've never known how to say the name Illyria. of this town, Illyria. Illyria, thank you, Jerry, Christian school, and really likes all the subjects he studies. Uh, the things that he loves include being a big brother and playing with his cousins and being with his family a real people person. Uh, his parents are proud of Carson for being a good friend and always ready to play with his friends and family. I got one more. Ayla 
It's I Isla Pollard Isla, and Susan. Pollard. I'm sorry, Pollard. Uh, her mom and dad are Nathan and Jen. Uh, she lives also with Enid the, I believe it's cat, although it says car here. I think it's Enid the cat. <laughs> Minor typo. <laughs> she loves Lego, LOL, and OMG dolls. Another reference I'm gonna have to look up. <laughs> Anything crafty and Minecraft. Isla will be going to Washington Elementary and her favorite subject is science. Um, Isla is very adaptive. This is from her mom, I believe, mom or her dad, and has taken on so much as a kid living through a pandemic. At the end of her first grade year, she had the assignment to create an invention that could help people out. All by herself, she came up with the Hugginator, a protective costume that fully covers you so you can hug your friends during COVID. She thought anyone in the world could use that. She once told her mom that her superpower is helping other people be happy. Some of the examples she gave were pulling all the various guests onto the dance floor at her auntie's wedding, going to see her great-grandmother at the Cedars, and while she was there, making sure she talked to all the adults and saying hello to them. <sighs> Got through that one without crying. I would like to introduce you to the other three. First is Briston Hancock. His mothers are Maggie and Mandy Hancock. His sister Cheyenne, sisters Cheyenne, Maddie, and Jordan, and his brother Kason. Kennison. Kennison. Briston loves football and is providing is proving himself to be a great player with a great future. He just works so hard. He attends Lincoln Elementary, where PE is his favorite subject. A story that was shared by his mothers, Briston has proved to work as hard as anyone can, and he just loves to be around people. He greets everyone with a hug and a sense of deep love. We are so proud of him. And recently, Maggie and Mandy were able to finalize the adoption of Briston, and he is officially a Hancock. Next is Abigail Avick Grace Miller. Her grandmother, Kathy Miller, is Linda Miller is here. Her mother is Monica Miller and her grandmother, Linda Miller. We are pleased to have Linda with us today. Avic loves to go on vacation and she loves her dolls. She goes to Washington Elementary School where she loves recess. She loves animals and really enjoys going to the zoo. On one of her trips to the zoo, she got a chance to feed an elephant. That was an awesome experience for her and for us, her family, to witness. And finally, the family is very proud of Avic because she is kind to others and loves to read to younger children. Thank you, Linda. And now for Jolie Ryerson. She is, her parents are Cody and Abby Ryerson. She has two sisters, Harper and Vivian, and a brother, Rhodes. Part of that family is also eight different pets. 
horses, dogs, cats, fish, lizards. Jolie loves basketball, soccer, tennis, softball, volleyball. She loves animals and she loves art and family and friends. She goes to Mound Ridge Elementary where math is her favorite subject. A story about Jolie is she has a kind spirit and always knows when someone needs a special word of encouragement. She loves sports and always gives her best effort and does everything with no fear and all heart. Her family says that Jolene makes them proud with her gentle and loving way that she treats animals. She is already planning her veterinary clinic when she gets older. Her entrepreneurial spirit also makes the family proud. It has been a, uh, I always enjoy this part of my call as the liaison to the Faith Formation Team because I get to read these bios before anybody else and, and I get to touch base with the families and make sure that I, I read them correctly and I have all the information correctly and it's just it's so neat to see how Guardian's parents not only view their sons and daughters but how they want to speak highly of them and lift them up. And you hear all these really wonderful stories, it's just a gift. And so the message today is not, this is the message, the third graders, Caleb, that's the message. Uh, we were also had another part of worship that we had to sort of move out because someone couldn't be here, and it was also about adopting and welcoming new members into the community. As we start the new school year, Moundridge is what, about a week away, I think? Give so they're still enjoying summer vacation. Um, at first, we've been in it for a week and a half, and you can see it by the sort of the, the tired eyes of our two ninth graders back there. Uh, entering high school has been joyful, but also exhausting. Um, it's a new beginning in so many ways. McPherson College is busting with energy. I had a chance to be on Central College campus. They're just full of excitement. All of this in the midst as we try to leave the pandemic behind and move into a new beginning, there's so much hope and promise that is sitting and waiting and inviting us into a new way of being. I want to challenge us as a community of faith because there are some new things and new beginnings happening here at the church. Mactown Kids is now Mac Kids. Don Hoffman is going to be the director of Mac Kids. Carolyn Schrock will be help guiding and administer that. And so we're setting things in place for an incredible, incredible year, a new beginning for Mac Kids. That will be from, I'm going to get the six to 7.15, starting September 7th. And by the way, so here's a little plug for September 7th. It's a kickoff. You've got Matt Friesen sort of navigating the grill, and if I have anybody else that wants to help him navigate that grill, we need one more volunteer. Doesn't matter if you like to stand over a hot oven grill and flip burgers and hot dogs, we need you. Please see Matt soon so we can get that taken care of. Um, I forgot that announcement, but I just put in the, I figure this gives me more attention and more space. Thank you. So Matt Kids is going to be great, great director. Youth group, 6th through 8th for middle school, starts that night as well. And it's from 6.15 to 7.20, senior high, 7.30 to 8.30, 8.35. But on the 7th, we are going to continue what we did last year and have an intergenerational event. We will have the barbecue, and then we'll have a church-wide amazing race. Yes, just like you see on CBS, there's going to be roadblocks and detours, and you have to do all of these things together, and the plaque will be handed to somebody. Your name will be immortalized. The plaque should be finished by then so that we can put the plaque up somewhere. It's a chance to really bond and build these deep relationships that will not only nurture young people, but those who walk with them and have a part to play in their lives. To that, I want to make a public plea. The youth team has decided that it's time to have mentors for our high school students. We have 10 high school students that are looking for a mentor. I have reached out to some of you, but we need more. Some aren't able to do it because of conflict schedules. We understand that. But if you are interested in spending time getting to know, advocating, allying for a young person, a high school student, 10 of them are looking for that. What does that mean? 
It means you simply become someone invested in their story. You go to their events. You send them cards. You text. Please don't call. Young people don't call. They don't even text really anymore. So you might have to get TikTok and learn how to manage TikTok or Snapchat and manage Snapchat if you really want to connect. Um, Texting is kind of a dinosaur at this point as well for young people. But learn it. Spend time with them. Have coffee. And know that when you do that, you're not just pouring into them. If you remain open to what they have to say, they're pouring back into you and reminding you just how beautiful life is and how much hope and promise we have. And so that is also happening this year. I am excited, and I think I can speak for the youth team at Faith Formation and all the teams that are connected, that this is going to be an amazing year. We have a lot of energy building and hope in what is coming. It's a CCS year, and we're excited about that because we think that it's going to be on environmental justice, and that is an absolute topic that young people are sort of interested in and, and passionate about, and our denomination has done a great job educating. So now all we need is for all of us to come together and do this. All of us to believe in what it means to change the world and have the hope that we can do so. All of us giving just a little bit more to make it happen. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you are tired? Let's be real. We are all tired. And that's why it's going to take all of us working together, picking up those pieces to be successful. But we can do this. This is what I believe is part of our call, one of those pillars of to be Jesus in the neighborhood. And I know that we have the community of faith that can make this happen. So as we move forward into this school year, let's do it together, and let's be excited and ready to branch out and be what we're called to be. Amen. Will you please stand for our sending song?
Please be seated. After junior high camp, Camp Colorado, on the last day as we're trying to figure out how to get people home, uh, Lucy Bowman and, and Clara Stover pulled me aside. And they said, we have this idea. Why can't we have camp throughout the entire year? Because we're tired of only seeing one another this one week, once a year, and we miss all these chances to see how we're doing throughout the year. That idea has sparked something that's going to happen. We are partnering with First Church in Wichita and Lorraine Mennonite so that we could have once a month activities with these two churches. And we're inviting other churches to join us to make it once a month we will have activities. But then here's the other piece. Next Sunday, Lord willing, we might have Lorraine High School students and First Church High School students joining us for worship here so that we can have lunch after and begin this journey. And the first Sunday in October, Lorraine and First Church are welcoming us as we take high school students down there to worship with them. Alan Stuckey has already got stuff in order and ready for that. We are beginning something new here, and we think it could be healthy and vibrant and life-giving. And the idea came from young people. It came from people with a passion to make the world a better place. This generation of young people is so rich and wise and ready to go. We have a lot to learn from them if we allow them to lead and to teach us. We learned in seminary and elsewhere that the children are not the future of the church. The youth are not the future of the church. They are the church. They are the church. So let us put them in position to lead us into a new way of being, and we will all be better for it. Go in love. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.